This is the Conway and Corolla Show. I'll be high, Sakai. We'll see how it goes. With special babbling sidekick, Danny Bonaducci. Really? And an occasional appearance by Tom Likas. Yes. And also Frosty Adior Frank. Really? Maybe even John and Jeff, if they're here early. Finland? Oh. All right, welcome everybody. It is the Tim Conway Jr. Show live at 97.1 Free FM on every Friday. We promise you, if he's in town... And I'm uh, on the air. Adam Carroll, everybody. Adam, how are you, sir? Hey, me. It's great <laughs> to finally get back onto the radio after <laughs> six hours. Back on, on the schedule, huh? Just clawing for some mic time. <laughs> hey, I saw something today, and uh, I thought uh, I'd bring this up. And this uh, has probably happened to you, but you know a guy for like five or six years, and he seems like uh, you know a decent guy. Uh, he's probably got a husband, you know wife and a couple of kids or whatever. And all of a sudden, he sports something pink, either a pink Lacoste or a pink uh, dress shirt. And you're like, huh? Yeah, and you're wondering, how long has this been in your arsenal? <laughs> like, is this a new buy? Or is this a, a, you know, WMD that I wasn't aware of, that you unearthed? <clears throat> and by the way, you wait to your 44th birthday to pop the collar on the IZOD shirt and go out with the pink thing on? <laughs> It, it's weird, too, because, like, pink and purple are the two colors where if you don't commit to them early and often, you can't just trot them out somewhere right. in midlife. Right. I have nothing in my wardrobe that is pink. Nothing. You, well, you know, it, it, it's really it, it's really the, the equivalent to the cowboy boot, which is if you have not rocked that look from zero to 40, you can't just start fresh at 41. Right. If you ever see a, a good a good friend of yours wearing cowboy boots who's never been yeah. worn, and it's like, hey, Hoss, how's the, how, how was the drive? Right. Yeah, you got to go with what got you there. Right. Uh, after about age 28, you can't wear anything new. No, and, 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 and look, you know, and also, you know, Lock off the look somewhere around, uh, you know, your junior year of college and never worry about it again. Right. Because everybody has that shoebox with the uh, horrible pictures where you look like you were in the band, the Romantics, in, you know, 1983. Right. And, you know, you went through your new wave phase and you went through your punk phase. Uh, no phases. Right. It, it, you know what I mean? Like, like this is – I'm going to tell – my daughter, when she's 11 and she's going crazy for the next Jonas Brothers thing, look, when you go through your punk phase in about five years, I'm going to trot these pictures out. <laughs> right, exactly. Of you kissing the Jonas Brothers poster, <laughs> and you're not going to like it. Right. <laughs> Establish a look and just stick with it. And go with it. Uh, this happened, I, I did this the other day, and uh, <clears throat> we, oh, we talked about this. Wait a minute, Timmy, i got to tell you this. Yes, one of the other ones. The other, ever have anyone pull this one on you? The guy who you've known as uh, Chris for 35 years is going, starting to go by Christopher? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, had, he or the or the guy who's uh, you know forty nine, fifty years old, and still goes by Robbie or Billy. Right. The, the whole thing about the changed name is that's fine with every new person you meet after you decided to go by Christopher, <laughs> but no changes. It, it's like the NHL, NHL with the with the helmet rule. <laughs> right. I, yeah. I'm grandfathered into Chris. Right. Exactly. I don't have to wear the lid. I was in the league. Before they made the change. Right. You know, speaking of helmets, when I used to ride my bike around in third grade, I had a Schwinn with a banana seat. Mm. And you only ride the, the Schwinn around or your bike around because you look cool, right? Right. And I had, I was sporting a look that couldn't take any more hits of uncool attire. So if I was riding around today with that Schwinn and a bike helmet, it would be game over with the chicks. Right. I mean, my look couldn't absorb anything geekier. Yeah, you are, you're what we call critical saturation <laughs> level with the, the geeky look. Right. One, one set of horn, horn rim glasses or a briefcase or some leather-soled shoes, and you would have been right over the edge. Right. I would have gotten my ass kicked every day. Well, you know, I was just is, on the cusp. I just had this weird flash. I just had this weird concept. But when we were kids, seeing a kid riding around on a bicycle with a helmet would be as weird as seeing somebody drive a car now with a helmet <laughs> on. You'd be like, what the F are you, where are you going? To some sort of demolition derby? No. 
I'm driving my car. Yeah. Where? <laughs> Off a cliff? <laughs> like, but, it would have been just this dumbfounding, right? If you saw but, a kid oh, yeah. with a helmet? But I wonder if a cop pulls over a guy now nowadays. He's driving a convertible around, and a, he's got a helmet on. Does the cop, like, give him some respect that he's trying to protect his uh, noggin, or does he write him up an instant ticket for being an a-hole? I would write him the a-hole ticket. I don't know, by the way. You know, if you're required, we have helmet laws for motorcycles. We should have helmet laws for convertibles. Oh, absolutely. Too. And uh, actually, I'll amend it because any any new car has a has a rollover system. Right. Literally, a bar that comes shooting out that uh, stops you from uh, hitting your noggin on the pavement. But any car. Any convertible pre, you know, 1995 is not going to have one of those. No. So they should be written up. And, you know, speaking no, of... No, they should have to wear old-time aviator helmets. <laughs> you know, leather with the, with the goggles. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, speaking of uh, motorcyclists, I saw this on the 101 freeway today where two guys were on a motorcycle. Two grown men were on oh, a motorcycle. Yeah. And now when there's a chick on the back, she can, you know, bear hug the guy's waist. Right. But when it's a guy, he's got to, you know, hold on to the back or hold on to the side somewhere. And there's no real leverage there. If, if they go around a turn, he's gone. Well, I'll tell you, if, if there's, 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 there's a little uh, rule of thumb I use. And uh, it'll, it'll solve uh, just about any, any one of life's conundrums. <laughs> All you have to do is think either black gay or drugs <laughs> and when you do that thing where you go like who the hell would rent a set of 22 inch spinner rims for their car <laughs> rent renting rims who's gonna rent rims right. <laughs> i'm not saying which one you fill into that gap right but it will clear a lot of things up <laughs> just it, uh, but believe me, between black, gay, and drugs, like when you go, who would use that? Who would buy that? Why would this do? Who's going to do? Just, I'm telling you, use one of those three. And any any time you ask who who rents to own furniture or who 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 uses one of these 99 cent wake up calls that they advertise? Don't you have an alarm clock? Or what two guys would be? That could be gay or drugs, by the way, right. or gay and drugs. <laughs> you know, I I went to rent furniture when when we. Moved because we had a, a wedding pretty quickly and we moved and I didn't have time to buy a couch. So I wanted to rent one for the weekend. You know, I rent a, a couch and a, uh, and a, and a uh, chair. And when oh, I went to the... wait a minute, Timmy, you're shooting holes in my <laughs> black gay no, no, but drugs. I, I, was, uh, I was gay on drugs, though. Oh, okay. Um, right. But I, when I went in to rent this couch for a weekend, it was like 60 bucks or so, right next to it, a toaster for $3 a month. Who's doing that? Uh, you could get at a yard sale for two fifty, right? Right, exactly. And it's a used toaster. I'm I really, I have. There, there's certain. I. It, it's like I said. Like it, it when you, you know, you drive, but you drive down the. You drive down the store. You drive down Ventura Boulevard. There's a place right in the heart of. Uh, of, of, you know, Ventura Boulevard and Sherman Oaks, and it says, simply incense and sand candles. <laughs> and, and there's 2,500 square feet of prime real estate there. And you're thinking, what the, how many units, how could you, the, 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 the rent alone must be nine grand a month on that place with that, uh, what, how many, did you just you keep driving? <laughs> right. I, that that one may be drugs. That could be gay or drugs too. It's not black, but the the point is, is uh, there is a lot of that in your life where you go, "What the ass? <laughs> right, what? Exactly. How does that work?" <laughs> and you do a customer quick customer count, and it's just the two guys working there, uh, right? And they're staring at the front door. <laughs> Right, you know. and it's always the same two guys, and they're always staring at the front door, and there's never, never any traffic going through the place. So how does that work? <laughs> right, I don't know, man. Have like, you ever see those businesses where you're like, "How much did you think you were going to make when you got started?" Right. <laughs> all, the all the the you know the lanyard store, it's just lanyard. Yeah, the guy had a dream, man. But it's, but it's one of the many dreams in his life that have been squashed. Uh, ev ev evidently, or the there's the other um, uh, there's one more you could add to this list, which is rich husband who doesn't care. Yeah, that well, those are the those are the stores on Ventura Boulevard between Whitsitt and Laurel. 
Right. <laughs> and chick, chick's like, I want to open a linen shop. Right. And and the guy's like, yeah, they, they have one. It's called Strouds. It's a cross <laughs> No, no. I mean a real linen shop. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what do you mean real linen? <laughs> I'm talking about high-end linen. <laughs> Yeah. Who's going to pay eighteen hundred bucks for sheets and pillowcases? Believe me, they're out there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and this guy's some kind of an attorney who's probably banging someone on the side. Doesn't really want to deal with it. He's just going to write it off. Yeah, he just wants her out of there. He gets her out of there. Yeah, exactly. And every travel agent, by the way, that hey, that's the situation. Right. Uh, you know, we again, Adam Carolla is with us, and we all do things that that make us feel better, and while giving the high sign. To the guy that we know, you know that w- what he's doing is decent, and we're not trying to f him up on purpose. For instance, I was at Subway the other day, and I was ordering my sandwich, and the and another guy came out and started mopping the place. Mm-hmm. Now, now the floor is wet between my sandwich and the front door, mm-hmm. so I had to do the Pink Panther walk yeah. <laughs> across the one. floor, right? Uh, just to show the guy that hey, I know you're cool, and I'm an a hole. Uh, but I'm not sure how this Pink Panther walk is going to help me on my tippy toes because you're still going to have to go over all these footprints. Right. But I'm giving the high sign that I know that you mopped. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just the acknowledgement of I've seen what you've done. I'm going to F it up, but I'm aware <laughs> that I'm effing it up. Right. <laughs> that is, I do like that Pink Panther, the Pink Panther move. <laughs> Way up on the uh, balls of your feet. You try to make as little impact as possible. And you try to skate around the perimeter. Yeah. Like, like that's not as tough for him to mop under the uh, tables to try to get your footprints. When I used to work with McDonald's on, on said Ventura Boulevard, that was my gig, doing a sweep and a mop of the dining area. Oh, Jesus. You know oh. what else I don't do is, if a guy's changing the trash can, I don't pile on and throw more crap in the, in, while he's doing that. When I was at the McDonald's, a guy threw his watch into the garbage can, <laughs> and I had to go sift through the dumpster to go look for it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, you want to talk about crap detail. <laughs> and by the way, no, no tip. <laughs> no, is that right? <laughs> well, you know how you tip... For just about everything now, right? <laughs> you just a nonstop twip, tipping machine, and it's always it's always twenties. It's twenties. It's twenties getting peeled off because that's what comes out of the ATM. Right. And you don't want to hang. You know, the valet guy, the valet was seven bucks. You would have given him five bucks worth of tip. Right. So you're already at twelve bucks. <laughs> but you don't want to hang out and look like a cheap ass. So you just give him the you just give him the twenty bucks. And you keep moving. Right. Uh, yeah, the guy that brings your bags up, you know, to the uh, the room. Well, uh, that was always a ten growing up, but now it's uh, it's a twenty, or else uh, you know he knows what room you're in. You know what the you know what the bad one is. I don't know if you've experienced this one, but if you do a little traveling for business and a car picks you up. Half the time, the guy who's driving you is not the guy who meets you at the baggage carousel. Oh, yeah, no. And he wants a, a bump, too. That's the, that's the uh, liaison. Right. That's the in-between. Right. That's the guy who mules you over to the guy with the town car. <laughs> so that guy needs something, and then the town car guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you've you got to give the town car guy 50 bucks. Oh, no. I give him, I, I give him 20 because they say the tip's included. Oh, I see. But you know what they should do with all that? Because whenever they do that crap where they send the town car to come pick you up, the tip is included, except for what they don't include is that weird, uncomfortable silence that you have when you're standing by the trunk of the guy's car in front of the house. He now knows your address, and you uh, give him the, uh, well, all righty then. (laughs) <laughs> you ask him some stupid question about L.A. even though you've only been gone for 19 hours? <laughs> and then How's you... it been good over here? Been everything good here? Everything as if he's holding down the fort while you're in Vegas for 19 hours? <laughs> and then you got to give him the, the cheap uh, line of, hey, uh, they took care of you, right? Right. Mm, you're, right. We're, they're, we're square. You know what they should do? If the tip's included... Instead of including it, give it to me. Let me hand it to him. <laughs> right, exactly. Because there's no way you're just going to walk. I don't care if they included a $5,000 tip for a ride from LAX to North Hollywood. You'd still have to put the guy 20 bucks. You right. physically need to hand him something. Right, exactly. Hey, now, when you, you went to a school in North Hollywood, right? Did you go to elementary well, school? Uh, uh, I went, by the way, 
I went to Walter Reed Junior High. Wow, look at you. I went to the high school that McCain showed in his slideshow. Wow. He was man. trying to show Walter Reed uh, Military Hospital. Oh, is it, and he screwed that up, huh? Yeah, it was a big story. They effed up, and they showed a picture of the outside of my junior high. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I went to North Hollywood High. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I don't know if you did this as a kid, but I remember uh, I went to uh, Encino Elementary and then Portola Junior High. Sure. And I, I remember, uh, you know, taking three or four bus trips, uh, field trips, where, you know, you know, you have to bring, you have to have a trip slip signed. Right. And, then, uh, you know, they say you got to bring your own soda. And some, you know, the guys whose mom really gave an ass about them really had a fancy lunch. Yeah. I had, like, whatever I put together for myself the night before. You know, right. bologna bread, a bag of chips, and an apple or something. Right. The, wor- and the, 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 the worst thing that, that, that has ever graced a lunch bag, which is the mini box of black raisins. <laughs> that had about as much currency as, like, uh, Confederate money after the Civil War. Like, no no trade. You, you couldn't get two raisins back for that. Like, everything had a street value, you know, because the yard, the schoolyard was like the prison yard. And if you had a mini Snickers bar or something, right. you could own a guy. Like, he, he'd give you a sister for the week right. for that. But the, no zero currency for that uh, that little Sun Maiden box. Yeah, yeah, there were guys showing up with half pound bags of M and M's, and they were king. Right. <laughs> yeah. But we used to take uh, field trips to like real crap out there. I mean, I remember one was to a, a you know a park downtown. Another one was like Alvera Street. <laughs> And Alvera Street, I don't think the kids go to anymore because you don't have to go all the way downtown. No, you just, here's Alvera Street. What street do you live on? (laughs) There you go. As soon as you step out of your front door, you're in Alvera Street. Oh, yes. When are we going to, where are we going to find some Mexican culture in this town? I would love to find a place that gets some Mexican food, hear some ranchero music. I mean, when we were kids, we had to go to Alvera Street for that. No, and then it was also weird too because you'd go down Alvera Street and they'd be like, "These are Mexicans. <laughs> right, Don't exactly. touch them." Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> I, 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 I will trump anyone's horrible, horrible field trip by by telling you this. I took a field trip when I was in about the fourth grade to Eagle Rock to go to the Laurie's seasoning plant. Wow! And no child left without a miniature packet of taco seasoning yeah i know and then mom goes home and uh, whips up a meal and acts like she made him from scratch <laughs> but could, could you find a, a topic or substance that a 11 year old boy is less interested in than seasoning <laughs> you, you know what i'm saying do you think do you think any do you think it exists <laughs> right. well, do you think there's a factory <laughs> if a factory made styrofoam packing peanuts it would be infinitely more exciting than the lorry seasoning plant right. and it's just a and it's an early start with you know put these kids on uh, on you know massive amount of salt in third grade right uh, to get them uh, you know real healthy for their future but it was also it was it was it was such a thrill to be out of school when oh, you were yeah. supposed to be in the school it that great. it didn't didn't matter i mean really if the field trip was uh the drunk bus driver's just going to circle the block for an hour and a half and then drop you back off in front. You'd be in, right? You're right. You're on. Yeah. We, we, we physically get to leave campus. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, and I would, would occasionally uh, forget my lunch at home, that I would never call my mom to say, yeah, I, lo- I, mean, I, lo- I forgot my lunch. Will you bring it to me? I'd rather go hungry all day than to get the wrath of Marianne Conway when she shows up with that lunch. I had to do the uh, humiliating uh, meal ticket program. Oh, yeah. You know the uh, underprivileged uh, kids. And, and by the way, let me let me just say this. Um, I oftentimes think about my you know experience at uh, Colfax Elementary and Walter Reed Junior High. These people could not make a hot dog or a hamburger, and McDonald's can make a perfectly fine hamburger and sell it for thirty nine cents. Right. How hard is it to F up? And by the way, this is to the palate of a seventh grader. <laughs> right. And not exactly what you call evolve. <laughs> I didn't need a little sorbet to cleanse it before I got into my sweet roll. <laughs> I, I was, a, it was, you know, when you're, when you're in the seventh grade, you're basically a garbage disposal. <laughs> you know, Pizza Hut makes the greatest pizza ever. Right. 
Uh, Pringles is the best potato chip ever. Kool-Aid is the finest uh, substance that's ever passed your lips. And I could not stomach one of these hot dogs or hamburgers. <laughs> the hamburgers were actually uh, not even brown. They were they sort were, of they green. Were, they were greenish beige hue. Yeah. And they seemed as if they were boiled or heated in some fashion. And... When you really get down to it, it was just institutional food. Like, it was literally prison food. Yeah, it, they had that lo- sort of like that rainbow sheen that comes off like a really old pigeon. Right, or or when your car's, uh, the, you, you know, when uh, when your dad's, like, station wagon is, is dripping transmission fluid and it rained the night before, <laughs> and you come off, you see a weird little rainbow in the puddle there. <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing, zero nutritional content in whatever, the fish sticks, the hamburgers, the hot dogs. And this is, we're, and by the way, you know this whole, like, uh, kids, you know, they're our future I don't think we were treated that way. No, but you know what I think uh, Mr. Corolla should have done is maybe, you know, not, uh, uh, you know, gone with the, uh, you know, I don't know what he, what he, what his uh, hobbies were, what he liked to do. Nothing. Uh, Ignore his family. <laughs> but maybe, you know, because lunch, I believe, when I was in third grade was 40 cents. Remember when I went up to 45 cents? Right, right. And to save you the humiliation of uh, on the program with the tickets, uh, uh, Pops, I think, should have laid, uh, you know, a, a quarter, a nickel, and a dime on you. Yeah, but to keep in mind... That would have been like giving your son 90 cents in today's money. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, you have, Tammy, you have no idea how poor and how desperate the Corollas were growing up. It was frightening. <laughs> what did your dad do for a living? Well, my dad was like a substitute school teacher the entire oh. time I was growing up, and my mom was you know, pretty much just welfare and food stamps, and they were separated, and my mom lived in this ramshackled house in North Hollywood that was her mom's second house that she just sort of let her screwed-up daughter flop in. So that's the house I spent most of the time in. And then my dad, my dad, like, like again, he was a, he didn't have any vices or anything. He, he, he was like a substitute school teacher i guess he made enough to just you know sort of barely get by my mom never worked and uh how old were you when your parents split i think it must have been about uh about eight or nine something oh, that like right? that and i remember uh did they have to sit down with you no no well it, it was funny because it was like um i don't know it's like it, it's like uh it's like if you were in the hole of a prison and you found out there was a new warden and you were like, well, who, well, who cares? I'm in a hole. I'm not, wait, how could this, this couldn't get any worse, could it? Oh, no, this guy's a real disciplinarian. I know, but I'm already in a hole. What, what you think it's going to get worse? Like, I remember when those two broke up, I thought... First off, I used to like, I used to like look at my mom and go, oh, good Christ. Dad, what the hell were you thinking? And then I'd look at my dad and go, holy Christ, woman, have some dignity. <laughs> but when they broke up, I remember thinking, well, you two, you two losers combined are like, oh, you know, the power of ten. You need to be separated. So n- number one and number two, I just remember thinking, how much more could this suck? <laughs> you guys just putz around the house giving each other stink eye all day. Now you can go to your separate crappy dwellings and just putts around by yourself <laughs> I, I remember when my when my dad sat me down and my mom was there and the six kids and they said uh you know it's over i think i was like 14 or so and there was six kids and some of them were pretty emotional but i re- just remember looking over at my mom and wanting to say to her i try to hold on here because i don't think there's anybody else is going to put up with that act yeah i know like I would use a little more of your marriage counseling certificates or, uh, you know, maybe a, an antidepressant or two. But you've got to yeah, really like, hold on here. How old was your mom at the time? I think she was, let me see, I was 14, so she's probably 50, no, she's probably about 48, 49. So she, she's got about the same currency in the open market as the mini packet of raisins we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, but this packet of raisins uh, was soaked in, like, Tabasco sauce. <laughs> right, so... 
zero zero <laughs> currency. Right. Yeah, the the only I mean, I didn't care. I knew they were both imbeciles, and they should be apart. And and they were so de- they're like together. They were depressed. The part they were apart. Uh, they were depressed. It, it didn't matter to me. I I knew I was going to be miserable and poor. Anyway, either way, I was going to be using a you know lunch ticket to get an ice cream scooper of spaghetti. Right, right, By the exactly. way, when the ice cream scooper, ice cream scooper should be used for ice cream, <laughs> not spaghetti. That means it's bad spaghetti. And only in schools in prisons do they use the ice cream scooper to put the spaghetti. <laughs> I know, and I like when you know there was a line for the cafeteria. And every meal was the same, right? But yet they didn't have all the meals ready to go. Oh, you know they would sit there. Wait, what do you want? Well, what oh, do you got? How uh, badly would they f up pizza? They couldn't even do it. They couldn't even do it in a wedge. They do it in a square. Yeah, just to make you angry. Right, and then you go out, and I think kid bars were a dime, and those chocolate, those uh, you know peanut butter cookies were a nickel. The, those those were a bargain. The only the only positive thing that really came from my parents' divorce is. Watching my forty-four-year-old dad turn into Austin Powers overnight because he had to get back on the scene and get laid. <laughs> so it was like all of a sudden, the guy wearing the bad brown suits and the Fred McMurray leather dress shoes is coming out in platforms. He's looking like Elton John's playing Dodger Stadium. All of a sudden, my dad comes out. He's wearing flares. And platform shoes, and he can barely walk. And I mean, you know, he looks like he's in the uh, rhythm section of uh, Santana or something. And I'm like, what the? He's wearing an Afghan shirt that's undone to his navel, and he's wearing clear glasses <laughs> with a huge fro and a beard. He looked like the guy from Boston. And I was like, what the hell happened to the to the uh, pathetic lump my mom married for the last 10 years? Like, he, it was 1976, you know? Oh, yeah. He had to make the scene. You know, when my parents divorced, my mom sought after guys that did everything that my dad didn't want to do. These guys would take cruises, they'd play tennis, they'd dance, they'd play bridge. Right. But all of them had, you never knew what they did for a living. Mm-hmm. They all had like, uh, you know, their own business, but no real business address, and they were always available. Are these the kind of guys that would, would introduce their... Uh their dates is their lady friend. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, my lady friend. Yeah, because yeah. those are the guys you got to look out for. Right. <laughs> it's not the girlfriend. It's not the friend. It's not the wife. My lady friend. <laughs> but the second husbands are always, uh, and all they do is, they're exactly the opposite of your dad, so you hate them. Uh, because, you know, dad was cool. He didn't, he sat around, he watched football. I remember my dad during the Super Bowl, he'd put uh, foil on the, on the windows, we try to get as dark and cold in there as possible to watch the Super Bowl. And then this clown would come in, you know, with his other tennis friends and want to watch the, uh, you know, the U.S. Open uh, tennis game instead well, of the football games. Well, that's just gay right there. And let, but let me say this. How the hell, like, as far as the step-parents go, I did some quick math on the step-parenting. My biological parents were lukewarm at best on their children. That, that was on a good day. Right. Could you imagine what the non-biological parents' reaction were, was going to be? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, when, when, when I had a... Um, <clears throat> Mike Hennessy was a friend of mine in, in third grade and still today is a good friend. And he, whenever we went to his house, his mom was always happy to see us. She, never, she always stopped what she was doing to talk with us, whether we were there for 10 minutes or, you know, five hours. Always offering us, you know, can you can I get you some cookies? You guys want something to eat? Are you hungry? And, and very caring, you know, bright woman who was always upbeat. And, and I always thought to myself, man, wouldn't that be great to go through life with somebody who, like, gave a rat's ass about you like that? And then I even reduced that. I'd rather just go, you know, through life with a mom that just maybe simply ignored me rather than just hated me. Well, you should have. You would have liked my mom. She <laughs> locked herself in a room, stared at a biorhythm wheel, and yelled, freak out. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, Adam Kroll is with us, and we were talking about this this, this week. But before I, I started working here at the station, I was um, I was a real low end guy. I owed a lot of money to the IRS. I didn't have anything going on. I didn't own a refrigerator. How much did you owe the IRS? One hundred twenty eight thousand dollars. Holy! I owed like forty five hundred bucks to the IRS and thought it was insurmountable. And by the way, when you make the minimum payment, you're just making the minimum payment on the interest and the penalty. Oh, yeah. yeah. You never touch the principal. No, but no. anyway, go but, ahead. But the guy, the IRS guys show up, <clears throat> and I'm sitting in my apartment, and they knock on the door, and I, they, uh, they open, I open the door, and my coffee table was a, an igloo cooler at the time. 
<laughs> so I had my feet up on it, and I said, hey, fellas, you want a cold one? And they said, no, we were here from the IRS. Uh, we want to uh, talk to you about the money you owe us. And I said, well, obviously you can see I got nothing going on. I can take you down to the liquor store next door, and you can tell, you can ask the guy, every time I buy a bag of ice, that means I'm on a date. <laughs> you know, I'm uh, trying to get some. And I also have inflatable fur- furniture. I had the blow-up couch that had a couple of patches because I fell asleep smoking and uh, popped my furniture. <laughs> I don't know what the guy was looking for. <laughs> Jeez, 128k. 128 thousand dollars. Yeah. Did you do an offer and compromise? Well, what I did is I didn't file for a long time, and they file you at the highest rate. So oh, once right. you go back yeah. and file, it gets lowered down. And I, I think it, we settled at like thirty eight thousand. I paid him a thousand bucks a month for like eight hundred years. Jesus Christ! Uh, yeah, but I they, had lots of. Uh, one of these days, I'll come in there and I'll bring in my, um, uh, well, you know, my my uh, social security statement or whatever the hell they sell you. Oh, right. Oh yeah, I got that too. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, start started my employment like 1979 at the Flask Liquor Store with you know <laughs> made 111 dollars you know in 1979, but a lot of goose eggs in there. Oh, I got a lot of goose eggs too. A I... lot of goose eggs, and I'm not talking about you know in high school. Yeah. Or living at home goose eggs. I'm talking about. I'm doing the math on some of these goose eggs. Like, hey, I was 28. Oh yeah, I I, thre- I, I have, I have three innings where I didn't get a, a run. Yeah, and that was I think 29, 30, and 31, and 32 wasn't a uh, stellar inning either. I one, think that was uh, like okay, two thousand okay. dollars. One of these days, we should because we both started working probably about the same time. Uh, we should go ahead and get our two social security statements. Go from you know, the, you know, the time we started working to the time we got into radio, and add up those. <laughs> I, I, I swear to you, Timmy, if you added up the you know fourteen or fifteen years of employment I right. had up until the point where I got into radio, you the combined you'd probably be at about. Uh, $31,000. <laughs> well, you know, I was underground for 11 years. Uh, I, I couldn't cash a check because they closed my bank account. Though. The IRS took it all, which right. was about $600. So uh, every time I got paid from a company, I had to go to the branch where the bank, you know, where yeah, that check was. You had to go hammer written. the check. You couldn't go to your bank. No. You go to their bank. But I remember getting paid by a company in Santa Monica, $2,800. And I look at the check and I go, oh, Christ, San Francisco. <laughs> I had to get in the car on a Friday, uh, slide up there before 2 p.m. on a Saturday and cash it. So <laughs> now, I, now I got $2,800 with me. And you know the first thing I did? I went to Tahoe and blew the whole check. <laughs> oh, my God, is that pathetic. <laughs> that is... That. I checked into the hotel in Lake Tahoe. I'm, I'm sorry, it's actually even lower than that. It was Reno. I went to Reno and checked in the hotel and paid for two nights, lost all my money the first night, went back to the desk and said, hey, I'm not going to make it through uh, the, uh, you know, the night here. Can I get tomorrow's night, uh, you know, uh, tomorrow's uh, uh, payment for the hotel? Can I get that back in cash? And the guy goes, absolutely. And he gave me back like $72. Really? And I, and I remember using that on the way home and got a flat tire on the way home. And that's where the $72 went. So. Jeez. Like uh, leaving Las Vegas. Yeah, and my, you know, and my, my, and I told my girlfriend these stories, and sh- she didn't leave. <laughs> you know? Well, it had to be the good Conway name. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ! I thought I was pathetic. <laughs> I remember when I was underground, I I got paid, and I was getting paid through the station when I was still underground. I used to go to across to the post office and get cashier's checks. And you can get up to a $700 cashier's check. And the reason I did it at the post office, because then you could cash them at any post office. And, and it's, I, I tell you, like, when you, you know, the, the, the amount of calories you burn being poor <laughs> and living off the grid, you know, like, okay. you know, when you just go all those times, you'd head down to Van Nuys to pay the phone bill oh, in right. person. <laughs> right. I knew where it was. It's Van Owen and Van Nuys. Van Owen and Van Nuys. Yeah. And you and sit you just, there in that you line. Just, you wanted to open the door and go, hello, losers. <laughs> there'd be nine people in front of you in line. That I were, started recognizing some of them. Yeah, it was like, 
what is your story? <laughs> How did you get here? Uh, you can't judge because you're behind the guy in the same effing line. Right. Yeah, the place used to be on Van Nuys right off of Van Owen. Yeah, it was, and it was every a big other percent- month I was down there with the uh, check because the phone was going to get shut <laughs> off the next 20 minutes. Yeah, it was the big Pacific Bell building. I was there uh-huh. right across the street from Arby's. And it was always, yeah, right, right, right uh, down the street from the super shot. <laughs> so, and I remember, it was funny, though, because I remember thinking to myself, what the hell are you losers doing here? Meanwhile, <laughs> I'm standing there with a beat-up pickup truck, you know, uh, dieseling out in the parking lot while I'm standing in line with my check in my hand. Right, and then you got the uh, the guy with the uh, selling ice cream outside and them giving out parking tickets for more than you owe on the uh, on the on the phone bill. But uh, and, but that phone bill, you know, they, there was plexiglass there, and every guy had a story, man. Right. Every guy laid a story on the dude behind the glass on how this happened. Well, I I uh, one time gave my Catholic uh, little brother my calling card. He went nuts with some chick he met on online in Kentucky, <laughs> and they just shut my phone off without even telling me. <laughs> Owed him three hundred and eleven bucks. <laughs> Literally just shut it off mid month. I know, it is amazing though. But you know what? I look back on those times, and I actually was less nervous. Uh, and had more laughs and was enjoying myself. I was miserable. <laughs> I, I got to be honest with you. I swear to you, because I, I hang out with all the same guys. And, you know, now we go to the cool steak joints and we go where we want to go. We do what we want to do. And, and every once in a while, because it's the same guys, you right, know, right. I just look at my old roommates, you know, literally sharing, you know, sleeping on a futon, three guys in a one bedroom, you know, sharing a futon and the whole thing. And every once in a while, my buddy Donnie will say when I'm complaining, you know, like I hear, I always say to him, look, if I knew it was going to turn out okay, I would have enjoyed myself. Right, that's true. I thought it was going to be 80 years of this. I thought it was going to be 80 years of sleeping on a futon with you (laughs) and going down to Van Nuys and Van Owen to pay the phone bill. You know, uh, you know, when when you have, I heard this commercial on the way to work today, and there's a commercial about life insurance where, you know, if something happens to you, will your wife be able to stay in that house or will those kids be able to go to that school? And I'm thinking, wait a minute, it, once you're gone, everybody's got to do a little scrambling. How, why should they live in the same house and go to the same schools when you're gone? <laughs> I do like the, the pressure peace. should be on everybody. I do like the one they always hit is peace of mind. Like I'm dead, <laughs> right? Yeah, they don't give an ass about you. Uh, my, 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 I have no mind. I have no <laughs> peace and no mind. It's all, it's all on the ground. <laughs> right. And uh, as far as they go, they're certainly further along than they were before they met me. <laughs> Isn't that enough? Right. Yeah. Do I have to keep them there for how many generations? Do I got to keep them in that house? Yeah. Like eventually, my kids are going to have kids. Should I just leave <laughs> off some uh, cougarons or something so they can go to the, eat at the finest restaurants? Like how many bars of gold should I leave behind? <laughs> yeah. And I'm gone. You guys should be able to feel the pinch too. I mean, right. you know, yeah. I took the ultimate. Uh, you know, the ultimate cruise. I'm yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, I don't want you. Uh, yeah, I don't want you uh, mourning uh, in a, in a palace watching a ninety-inch plasma television. I want some real apartment mourning. Oh yeah, and and you know, and if you stick them in a, in a one-bedroom apartment with you know, like a young uh, son or uh, son and daughter, or a couple of kids, then you won't have these guys coming around trying to f them either. Right. But you you keep them up in that Hollywood Hills with those cars and that maid and that bank account. You're going to get a lot of guys knocking at that door. Very good point. That's it. I'm canceling the life insurance. <laughs> I, even, I wonder if my dad has life insurance. <laughs> I, I bet he doesn't. I, I bet my dad has some, but I, 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 I think he's sort of exhausted on my, on my uh, brothers who have uh, eaten up a lot of it. I stopped leasing my dad his luxury car. Oh, is that well, because he wouldn't drive it? He wouldn't drive it. Yeah. And uh, I told you that. He showed up for about the third time. In uh, the uh, stepmom's, uh, you know, burnt orange Honda CRX, and I said that that that's it. <laughs> that, uh, the, the literally the ride is over, <laughs> and he was like, "Why? What the ass?" You know, and I was like, "You show up my house, you never drive the car and lease you." And he's like, "Yeah, so what's the problem?" <laughs> and I said, "Well, I said, but what if you?" He now my dad doesn't like anything except for the trumpet, right? 
So he didn't even know what I was talking about when I said, Dad, it doesn't feel good to me to have you show up in the stepmom's car, not in the expensive car that I lease you every time you come to my house. And he just looked at me and said, I don't understand why that doesn't feel good. <laughs> I said, you can't understand that? And he said, he said, no, I don't understand. I didn't know there was conditions on the lease. I said, there's not, there's not conditions. It just doesn't feel good to buy someone a $50,000 car and have them never drive it to their house. You can't understand how that feels? And he said, I, I no, I don't. I don't understand what that, what that means. And I said, Dad, what if there's a guy you played the horn with? And on his 50th birthday, you went out and you spent a bunch of money and you got him the best flugelhorn made. I'm talking about triple polished black with, uh, you know, mother of pearl uh, fingerings on it. And you got that guy the best horn ever. <laughs> and then every time you jammed with him, he played the old dented <laughs> horn. He never brought that thing. Right. Wouldn't you be PO'd? Did he get it then? He, he paused and he gave me, he tried. He goes, I suppose he would have a reason. I forgot the crap. You would be pissed. And then what if that same guy said to you a year later, Hey, uh, Jimmy, you know, I could use another horn. How fast would you tell him to F off? Okay, that's what we're dealing with here. Yeah. And all he had to do is drive that car three times to your house. Uh, it, One out of the three times. <laughs> right, exactly. Now, You've never saw the guy in the car. Now, that is a shrewd, that's a shrewd businessman. Oh, man. Leave the Jag in the driveway. Take the Honda, which they own, by the way. Right. And uh, don't put any miles on the car that's eight grand under the lease, and it's going to be turned <laughs> in in a month. Excellent. Awesome. All right, Carolla, yeah. thanks for coming on, buddy. And uh, I, I heard some of the show last night. It was great, especially when you started talking about the uh, NBC's new shows and uh, death. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. And that, I guess, is going to air on Monday. you got a three-day weekend coming yeah, up. Yeah, right? buddy. Look at you. Look at me. Uh, all right. We'll enjoy it, and uh, maybe we'll do this again next week. Yeah, I bet we will. Yeah, and, and by the way, um, uh, if you're at Amazon.com, buy that hammer. I'll tell you what. Just go there and read the reviews. Yes. And uh, after you get through the reviews, then you decide. And uh, listen to Corolla's show every Monday, every Monday through Friday, starting at six. Well, really five, but eh, sort of six, right? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, sort of six, six to uh, ten a.m. But, buddy, thanks for coming on. It's always an uh, entertaining, uh, you know, half hour or so. And uh, and I uh, truly think you're the uh, funniest man in show business. So. That's why I keep coming on, Timmy. There you go. No one else at the station likes. So. <laughs> All right, thanks, buddy. You too. All right, take care. There he goes, folks. Adam Carolla, man. And I, I tell you, nobody uh, makes me laugh. I hope he makes you laugh like that. But I, uh, I seriously, every Friday, I get tears in my eyes. And I'm laughing my ass off, man. That is a, a funny, uh, smart guy. All right, here's the uh, Tim Conway Jr. Show live at 97.1 Free FM. It's so sad. Welcome back, everybody. It is the Tim Conway Jr. Show live at 97.1 Free FM. And uh, for the very first person to call me right now, I'm going to give you a $50 gift certificate. 520-9710 and 888-520-9710. And Gina, can you put that person's name up? The first person that calls right now is getting a $50 gift certificate to the seller in downtown Fullerton. Look at that. Oh, man. Yeah, the seller. Merrill, you're always down there, right? What I would do with one of those right now. Yeah. Hey, Merrill's here uh, promoting his uh, show or working on a show for a Saturday. How you doing? Oh, hello, Tim. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah. It's us, uh, Schindler, here on uh, 97.1. It's all free of him. Right. And uh, we're going to the Loose Goose Wine Festival soon, Tim. Yes. We're going to give out tickets for that later on as well. Oh. Anyway, go to the cellar, and your uh, special event destination is the cellar. It's cellardining.com. C E L L. A R dining dot com. And from what I understand, that's a, a terrific restaurant. Oh, the cellar. It's yeah. amazing. It's <clears throat> almost as good as El Torito and Chef Pepe. All right. Then the uh, second prize. Uh, hey, Randy, you get the second prize here. I do? Yeah. It's uh, improv classes um, it, uh, in Los Angeles at the Acme Theater. Uh, they teach you how to do voiceover, voice impersonation. 
and um, all kinds of improv as well. Wow, I can't wait. Yeah, you get a, a, a two-year class for free. That's awesome. Yeah, hope you can enjoy that. All right, let's talk to uh, Robert here. Hey, Robert, you're on 97.1. How you, dude? Well, good evening, Conway. Fantastic now. Yeah, you get 50 bucks, man. I can use it, too. I really appreciate it. Have you been to the cellar? No. Oh, all right. Well, it's in Fullerton. You're close to Fullerton? Uh, well, I know Fullerton. Yeah, yeah, about 10, 10 minutes. Excellent. All right, well, get on down there. Congratulations, buddy. You're the best. All righty. There he goes. $50 gift certificate to the cellar downtown. Fullerton. All right, we're going to take a small break. We've uh, got some commercials played because we went a little long with uh, Corolla. We'll come back with the news with Gina Grant. What's going on with that news, Gina? Well, Michelle Obama warns against voting for someone just because they're cute, and Meghan McCain gives Matt Damon a piece of her mind. We'll talk oh, about this and more boy. after the break. Also, uh, right now, it's the David Letterman Top 10 list, the top 10 new words. <laughs> it's words. <laughs> <laughs> and they're new. <laughs> they're new. <laughs> That's the ticket to be a word. <laughs> All right, it's Letterman Top Ten list coming up. It is the Tim Conway Jr. Show. Back with the news and Gina Grad live on 97.1 Free FM.